Boom! Welcome back to the channel, it's the Mac, and welcome back to the, uh, another Let's Play of the Great uh, Panther Campaign series. With the legendary John Tiller, who actually recently passed away, I'm sad to say. Uh, one of our greatest uh, strategy game designers have passed away, but have left a great legacy behind. All them great games that we um, have enjoyed so much. And um, sad news indeed. I was shocked actually, but uh, I guess that's life. And um, but as I said, he left a great legacy. And today I was gonna, I'm gonna be covering the Panzer campaigns of France 40 here. This is one of my actually favorite titles in the series. It's incredibly well done. This is the gold edition. And uh, it comes packed with great stuff, uh, loads of scenarios, and uh, a grand campaign, in lots of different versions. It's actually it's it's just a great game, and uh, I'm actually uh, playing it uh, off off camera at the moment, uh, doing this huge campaign that comes with it, and I'm having so much fun with it. I mean, wow, it's such a great. I'm going to show some stuff from the game here. And we're even going to be playing a uh, the PBM battle there, not against my good old gaming buddy Ash, but actually from somebody else, uh, some random opponent I found uh, on the gaming sites, and we'll see how that goes. Um, so yeah, Panzer campaigns, France, forty gold, man, wow, yeah. So uh, basically, I mean, uh, I've been covering some of these games before, and, and I mean, uh, they are the same in the layout and uh, design and uh, menu systems and everything. So, as, if you master one of these games, you basically can uh, play them all. I mean, there's not like a huge difference in the, the game mechanics in these games. But what is the strength of these titles is all the theaters they cover, and. Uh, Man, they are huge. I mean, uh, it's almost like a history lesson <laughs> playing these games. I mean, you learn so much about the different operations and, and uh, units involved and campaigns and major battles and what happened and stuff. I mean, to get the most out of these games is actually to uh, pick anything of these scenarios and can, or battles and read something about it. I mean, pick up a good book about it or read something on the net or something and you get a really good background information what actually happened and uh, how units moved and what the strategies were and stuff. And then dive into the battles and you could uh, play them as it was historically or you can change, I mean, tactics and do something else. I mean, it's so much fun. Obviously, the strength is to play against other human opponents because uh, you'll get the—I mean—the the toughest resistance. Basically, uh, the AI is somewhat old, I guess. I mean, uh, not all all the time. I mean, uh, I'm doing the, the the grand campaign now, and uh, I'm finding it hard to uh, to to duke it out uh, versus the AI. So. Will definitely give you a challenge if you, uh, you know, play it. So yeah, this is what it looks like here, man. Uh, what's great about this is, I mean, there's there's a bunch of scenarios here. Uh, they have all the original stock scenarios that actually came with the original game back in the day, and then they have the uh, Volcano Man uh, versions. These are marked as alt, and then they have these. Uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but Pruka, Pruka, he's also, Mike Pruka here, there's a designer there, he made a lot of the uh, different versions of uh, the, the scenarios in these games and campaigns, and uh, the game comes with quite quite a bit of documentation, so do take your time and read that, um, there's just a lot of explanation in those that tells you why there are changes, what, what optional rules to use, and and uh, there are some, uh, even some more new applications in these gold editions. With the, for example, the wired bridges, uh, as you advance. I mean, in these uh, scenarios, especially if you're playing uh, the, uh, I mean, in Western Europe with all the canal systems in in Belgium and, and Holland, and. Uh, there's a lot of bridges to take in consideration to crossings, heavy bridges, medium bridges, light bridges. 
and you need to plan your routes and strategies to uh, you know overcome these obstacles so uh, for example the wire bridges that you could play uh, like a campaign with with the predetermined wire bridges that they they will uh, blow up if you uh, come within um, too close of a range to, to, to depict it that they were actually blown up by engineers or you can play with manual uh, bridge um, demolition that uh, the engineer units will actually move up and rig, rig the bridges and, and blow them up basically so it's a race against time to get there before the engineers actually blow the bridge and you can cross and alter history or do something else man I mean, there's so much stuff you can do this in these games anyway right so you have uh, Obviously, once you have these getting started scenarios uh, in all the titles to uh, get familiar with the game system and um, the basics, basically, and there's documentation to follow there, so that's good stuff. They always have that, and you learn a lot uh, of uh, actually the current title that you're playing as well. So they have the this is the grand historical campaign of France 1940. It's 140 turns, and. Uh, what was in the old title was that it actually uh, ended you didn't actually get to play like the whole uh, invasion of france basically it stopped just short of dunkirk and uh, when the when well when the battle actually was decided and the allies retreated to dunkirk and, and uh, managed to escape with a large portion of their forces there so you have the, the historical campaign. You have Volcano Man mods and uh, Volcano Man's version, and you have the Prucha. Now these are cool because here you you actually get to play uh, beyond the original date. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I think um, the A1 and A2 are meant to play against the AI with the. Uh, special rules and um, there's this documentation that follows that so you you uh, know what to do and i think these these b versions we we'll see that 259 turns man uh they are probably meant to be played against a human opponent to get to get the like the, the full out of it you know and um they have some alternate they have loads i mean the strength of this game is actually this this big campaign here it's so much fun to play and of course they have different versions here of it and uh, then you have the dial the, the dial line the that that, that first uh, where the um, the bridge expanded the forces and, and the french moved moved up to to reinforce as the germans were crashing through the, um, the belgian border and um, holland and they came there and they were actually hoping that that dial line was going to be uh, well prepared but the belgians hadn't finished the, <laughs> the fences there so uh, history we all know what happened there they got overrun and had to retreat back and stuff so and then they have the ardennes you know where the main german thrust was so there's, there's, there's loads here, Maastricht, I mean, they have all the major battles here, Gambois, Hanout, the big battle of Hanout there, the first major tank battle of uh, World War II, where um, the French and the, the Germans clashed with a uh, huge uh, tank battle, lots of tanks involved there, and the Germans actually, uh, for the first time, realized that, shit, our tanks are not that powerful, <laughs> but of course with superior tactics and uh, they had uh, were very good communication between the tanks and it was coordinated with artillery with the air with the Luftwaffe as well that was they had a, a brand new warfare basically that faced off with the um, the old French warfare and the, we all know what happened there they the French didn't did not utilize their their superior tanks uh, as um, they should have had so the, uh, after that, the Germans sort of overcome that, and they, they could overwhelm the opponent. And he, of course, the mighty 88 was very useful in France to knock out all those uh, French heavy tanks. You have Sedan crossing there, uh, the Meuse River, the Dinant. That's where Rommel passed with the Seventh Panzer um, Division, and uh, Montaigne. That's where. Uh, yeah, the, the remaining two German Panzer divisions, Kleist, I think, passed. 
And there's, there's loads here, man. So, so much good stuff. And what's good about this, they've, they've included the, the, uh, the Dunkirk Pockets scenarios as well. The, those were not in the original uh, uh, past campaigns game there. So they have that. It's pretty cool. Uh, so just have a look at... Uh, just to show you guys what's in the game folder here. You have the... Uh, yeah, so they have a bunch of, they have the gold, they have the abbreviation glossary, they have gold design notes. It's, uh, they have the new features with fragile morale, they have national surrender. You can actually, as historically, the, um, the Dutch surrendered after the uh, Germans actually bombed, uh, or threatening to bomb, but they actually did bomb. Um, what was it called again? Um, uh, I can't remember the name of the town now, but uh, so they surrendered after that. And uh, they also have that for Belgium, I guess. They have general features. So there's just there's loads of good documentation here, man. Some good stuff in here. Some good stuff. And. Uh, they have the notes. Notes is good to read here because um, you get um, some designer notes here. These are really good to, to read through to uh, get a good uh, understanding of what the, they have implemented in this game as well. So, good read there. And uh, what else? user manuals of course and stuff so really good stuff there do check that out right so uh, I was thinking of playing uh, something uh, shortish uh, not 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 a, not a like a long campaign here but uh, you can have a look at that actually fire that up and you guys can see here for instance uh, yeah, so these are, these two are these two grand campaigns are meant to be played uh, against a computer, for instance. So if we have a look at this one here, the first one it has it, it uses wired bridges. So objective hexes have been placed to encourage the German player to recreate the historic German sickle cut maneuver. Uh, please uh, read the attached design notes we mentioned. Yeah, so victory wired bridges suggests strategies, and I think the second one has. Um, Let's see here. This, sh this short version of the campaign runs through May 26. It's, it uses manual bridge destruction. Yeah, objective hexes have been placed in the German player. Yeah, so these are to like really recreate uh, the historic campaign. So, for instance, if we take the, it doesn't really matter which one we we open here, but let's take this one here and uh, let's put the allies on automatic. Now, the rules. Actually, every time you open the rule dialog, I, they are this rules dialog is actually rigged for the stock scenarios. So you have to go into the documentation and read about what they suggest you to, what rules you actually are suggested to use, because uh, it will really determine how to, how to enjoy the the, the, uh, the campaign and the scenarios there. But let's just have the default here. So you just have a look at this massive here. This is so much fun. I'm playing it in a moment off camera and I'm having a blast. I can highly recommend it. Such a thrill. Right, so you, you can see the scale here, man. Uh, it's huge. Here we have the whole thing, man. It's huge. <laughs> uh, so you have uh, the north here. Swall. So there was actually a couple of, uh, I think there was an SS, yeah, Lieberstandarte was actually attacked through Holland. Here you have the, all the, the major canal crossings of Belgium. Let's see if I can remember the town, it's over here. Yeah, it's, it's Rotterdam, I think. They threatened to bomb Rotterdam. So, uh, and they actually did, I think, as well. Yeah, so what's also cool about this, they have, they have included the uh, the famous uh, Falkensjäger airborne uh, attacks that landed around here in the uh, 
to quickly seize the bridges and canals and, and important junctions here for for the remaining of the German thrust to smash through here and come up and, and um, sort of seize the uh, Den Haag, the, the capital there. They also have one of the more f most famous uh, special forces action that took place. That was the Fort MIL. This Fort Eben MIL. Where the, the famous glider attack of the German Brandenburgers as they landed on top of this fortress that they, was the most modern fortress ever built, <laughs> basically. Uh, and um, was sort of the cornerstone of the defense here. But uh, they land on top and use these shaped charges and blew holes in there and overwhelmed the defenders. It was nuts. Uh, there was over, like over a thousand men in that fortress and those less than a hundred <laughs> guys actually held them at bay and ma managed to hold it and uh, take it out as the remainder of the um, Germans poured in here and attacked across here. Leash was, uh, was, was also a pretty stronghold here. There's lots of bunkers and pillboxes around here. And it actually took, I think the, the Germans didn't capture Leash until the 15th or something. So you start, of course, the 10th May there. And then you have the famous attack through the Ardennes, where they actually, the, the main German attack was with the Rommel, the famous Rommel and the 7th Panzer Division attack through here. I think this is him here. No, that's the second Panzer Division there. So, uh, where the heck is he? Here he is, Rommel. Right, so they, uh, the 7th Panzer Division just smashed through here as well. And uh, they actually crossed at uh, uh, Dinant. Where is Dinant? Give it. Here. That's where they, uh, the Rommel uh, smashed through there. And of course you have the Sedan and, and there was an attack at Montam uh, as well. Kampfgruppe Kleist, Panzergruppe Kleist went through there. All right, so the, such a fun game this. So much good stuff here. Uh, right, so now you've seen that. Uh, so let's see here. We're gonna play a battle. We're gonna sort it by length. I was thinking of something like, like a shortish. I was actually thinking of this. Arras, the Battle of Arras. Uh, Aha, maybe you pronounce it, I don't know. So this was the uh, the, the British, the British Expanded the Force uh, actually uh, did, with, with some French uh, tanks as well, did, did a counterattack as the Germans were really, uh, well I, I could just read the description here. Uh, Aha, France, 21st, so that's 11 days into the campaign there. In May 1940, Churchill and the War Cabinet were convinced that the BEF of 250,000 men were more than ample to deal with the few German panzers cruising around the Somme. <laughs> uh, they sent the Chief of the Imperial General Staff, General Ironside, to inform General Gort to retake uh, Amiens. I'm, I'm terrible at pronouncing French. <laughs> Sweep aside any uh, opposition en route and in the process stop any link up of the German infantry with armor. Court informed Ironside of the real situation, offering limited offenses with his two reserve divisions and the first tank uh, brigade. The French also offered support of two divisions. This was the plan. In reality, only two small columns, columns with a few French tanks could be scraped up uh, to counterattack. The attack, while not a total success, did succeed in jolting the Germans at the sight of their own tanks burning on the battlefield and slowing their progress for a while. Yeah, so it was a uh, sort of failed attack, but they managed to hold off and stop the Germans for a little breather, so more troops could uh, evacuate and retreat to, towards Dunkirk. So tactical victory, maybe you could say, but. Uh, they actually had to retreat and were overwhelmed by the Germans uh, in the end there. So I'm going to just give that a try, man. And uh, we're going to play by email, man. And uh, I'm going to be playing... Uh, I think I'm going to be the British, actually. It would be fun to see if I can actually alter history and uh, <laughs> hold the Germans back. Um, 
So let's kick that sucker off. No, we don't want to save this. All right, so I'm going to be um, allied. I'm going to fog a war. Now the rules, since I chose, this is a stock scenario. So these are the rules that are actually recommended for the stock scenarios. And uh, there are lots of rules here. Uh, I think there are even some new rules in the gold editions. But uh, there is a good, if you go into on the John Tiller site, uh, there's, there's a quite a good, I mean, it's even in, it's in the manual as well, but here's a pretty good summation of the actual optional rules and what they mean. So this is always good to know because uh, it, could, it could be a game changer, basically. So basically what they recommend is an alternate indirect fire resolution for airstrikes and direct fire and assault and indirect fire. So what that means is that I think it means that the firing cost is higher, but it affects more units in the hex, basically. So you, you can't single out certain units it sort of spreads evenly through the the stack of enemy enemies that you're actually fighting that, that's what i think and it's also a rule used because in this early stage of the war um infantry anti-tank weapons were like very limited so they uh, had like anti-tank rifles and hand grenades and maybe grenade bundles and stuff but they didn't have any like panzerfausts or good anti-tank um, capabilities so what it actually reflects is that you, there are units with no heart attack values. So if you assault, that you will be using. Um, so this is this is a good summation here. When this rule is selected, the effective assault value of a unit is calculated as weighted average of its default assault value and its heart attack value based on the proportion of the other side's strength. That is hard. For example, if all the other side's strength is made up of hard targets, then the effective assault value of the unit is the same as its hard value. If none of the other strength is made up of hard targets, then the effective assault value is the same as its default assault value. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, so that basically helps units out that are, they don't have a hard attack value there. And uh, we have low visibility air effects, they recommend. So that's, when this rule is selected, the low visibility causes Reduced air unit availability as described in the air power section. Okay. And what else? Night fatigue. Night fatigue is. Uh, there it is. If this rule selected units that are active during night turns will accumulate fatigue. Yeah. So that's pretty. That's a pretty realistic. Uh, limited air recon as well. Yeah, the selected enemy unit spotting using uh, air recon can it be targeted with, it with uh, for air or artillery attacks unless the enemy unit is also seen by a friendly ground unit. Yeah, so they can call in like the airstrikes and stuff. So that's pretty good. Well, let's go with that. Let's go with those default rules. I have checked with my opponent and uh, I think he's okay with that as well. Okay, so uh, let's go, man. I like side. Let's go. All right. Here we are, units that have been released, the Durham Light Infantry, one of ten, okay. Right, so here we are, it's two o'clock, the 21st of May, conditions day, local control, all right. So this is, this is a gold edition, but they still have not released uh, that patch that makes the zoom in level high resolution. So you can see if I zoom in, the, uh, it's still a bit, uh, the map is not crisp and clear, but uh, I guess we're going to have to do that until that is released. So here we are, man. This is the battle here. I'm the Brits, and uh, this is, must be my French units over here. Yes, yeah, so we have Ara, and we have these... Trying to capture them. <laughs> it's gonna be tough. All right, so what the original plan was, we have the French over here. What do we got? Right, we do have some good French tanks, I guess, with no infantry support though. First of all, let's have a look at the victory conditions. 
Because we do need at least 150 points here. So we need to capture at least three objectives and cause considerable damage, or two objectives and cause considerable damage to the enemy. It's going to be tough. Um, the weather was uh, two kilometers normal conditions. All right. Uh, do we have anything arriving? Scheduled stuff. Where the heck is that? Here we go. Scheduled. Nothing. All right, we got nothing. We got what we got. All right. So these are the the uh, the, the French, and these are the two columns that are attacking. And I think even there was a. Um, his units over the uh, yeah the 150 infantry brigade actually made an attack as well during this operation. So we have the 50th uh, division here. Mart Martel is the commander, and we do have something over here. The fifth division, Franklin, Exp expeditionary forces. They are sort of a, there's a canal here, so they are defending here. They're fixed. Uh, not good though. We don't have any attack there at all. We have some artillery there. And these are the dudes that are actually going to be advancing and attacking. These guys are part of what? Yeah, they're part of the, they're defending. So this, this is the attacking force here. The Green Howards. They are motorized infantry. They have pretty good uh, soft attack there. They have uh, good defense. Salt's pretty high as well. 14 is pretty good. And we got the first army tank brigade. Yeah, we have some Matildas here. So what happened here was the British are using their Matildas. So in uh, tank quality, the uh, <laughs> the uh, the allies are superior here. Uh, the German tanks are inferior in the, like armor and firepower, but uh, mobility and speed is probably their forte. And they have, of course, the infantry is deadly. So um, we have some armored reconnaissance, they're armored cars. We have Matilda 1s, I think. They were. Just, yeah, I think they only had machine guns, those Matilda ones. So they are only for uh, like attacking infantry and um, soft targets. We have the Durhams, the light Durham with the engineers accompanying them. Two companies, yep, two companies here and a engineer company there. We have uh, some timber support, 25 pounders. These are the, uh, the Durham Light Infantry there as well, with engineers. And here we actually have the Matilda 2, which had a two pound gun, sort of equivalent to about 40 millimeter gun on it. So they were pretty good, a good defense as well. 16 defense, man, that's pretty high. But they're slow, 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 uh, slow tanks, moving very slow here. And we have the French, of course. We have the Hotchkiss H, uh, th uh, H39 there. A pretty good all-rounded tank. And uh, I think we do have the uh, yeah the the, the Soma, Samua S35 there. They're, they're heavily armored and good guns and very good soft targets as well. They have morale C though, so. These are morale B, they're a bit more over, but A, A, A is good, A is best, so they, these guys are like elite reconnaissance units here. Do have some guys deployed here as well. We have the Durham Light Infantry here as well, in these uh, trenches with the two pound anti-tank gun defense there. So they've got an anti-tank screen going there. Here we have the Cam Cameronians. Yeah, my history on the British units is not the best, but... Uh, okay, we have spotted in a village 
double-digit German arm uh, reconnaissance there. So I do actually, uh, I brought up a map here <laughs> to have a look at what the hell happened in this battle. So this is what history, uh, what happened in history here. We have the French, they were sort of attacking like this. So it's supposed to be some sort of German forces here. We have the SS Totenkopf that was taken part in this battle. They moved here historically. Some more Totenkopf there. We have the 7th Panzer Division. This is the 5th here. So this is how far the British came to the, the, the lines before they had to pull back there. So I'm going to try and uh, recreate this. So the French actually moved down there and then swung up here. The Germans attacked and they moved back and then they swung down here to fight the British columns as they were moving in. So one column is basically moving like this and attacking this sector while the, those guys are moving in there. And this column sort of moved down here and split up and attacked this, this general area over here. So let's try and keep it historical, but uh, maybe do some changes. We'll see what we can do here. Okay, what else to check? So it's two o'clock, so we can move out. We have a uh, big headquarters there. Let's look at the uh, shade up, uh, the command ranges here. So that they are covering the whole battlefield there. I think they are as well. This is the tank headquarters there. They, are, they have a pretty good field of command there. Those guys are out of command there. I mean, you could probably need to move this headquarters. Get a bit to everybody's in command here. Let's do that right off the bat and get that moving. Let's uh, move it up on top of this hill here. So we have higher command radius. This is the fifth. So look at their command range. It's pretty lousy. Those guys are not in command there. Maybe we should move that up as well. Okay, so they cannot, they need, oh, they're fixed. Oh. Alright, need to move them up. If they get unfixed, I can get them up there maybe. So, so far it's good. What about this French command unit here? The uh, Lang Langlois, Langlois, Corps de Cavalerie. Let's have a look at those guys. Shade the uh, command range here. Right, it's not the best. They probably need to move up as well. Yeah, they sure do. Uh, how far can they move? So they can actually move up. Let's get them into these trees here. All right. All right, start moving us. Start moving the Frenchies, I guess. Yeah, so what we're going to be facing, what we're going to be careful here, the Germans have air superiority. We have no air air force, basically. I don't think we're going to have any any air, air, air force available for this fight. And there's going to be plenty of Luftwaffe planes flying around. So this is going to be the danger for us. The, uh, the Air Force and the 88s and the German infantry. Tanks, not that worried about the tanks. If I can face face the tanks, face off with my tanks, we should be fine. Um, we'll see. <laughs> right, so historically it seems like the, the, this French uh, attack force moved down and sort of swung around and moved here. Maybe change that. Maybe try and go through here instead and attack in this general direction. These guys will move like this. If we're lucky, we can, we can encircle these German units here and uh, annihilate them. So let's move the French like this. Move this column down here. And this column will move sort of in through, through Ara, I think. And uh, maybe we'll see what happens when, when the Germans pop up. I uh, have no idea. Let's start moving out. Though. Let's get these uh, badass Suma tanks to see how far they can move here. All right, so they can move all the way. They can do a real charge over here. 
Maybe sneak them in. We don't have any intel on the enemy here. We don't know where they are. Um, it looks like we can move all the way and cross the stream here and end up on the road. Let's try that. So far, so good. Let's move them up there as well. Right, so we do have these um, Hotchkiss tanks. We do have some more here. We have... Uh, these are independent, these guys. I think these guys are... Yeah, no, they're all independent. Like companies here. Let's get this moving. This is probably not as fast. Let's get them maybe over. I don't know. Let's see here. What is visibility like here? Yeah, so if he's on top here, we already spotted. If we're unlucky. <laughs> okay. Um, I say. Hmm, maybe charge in here with those. These two tanks. They could move up here, maybe uh, capture these two villages here, why not? Let's get them, let's get, move up and capture these just before the stream here. See if we can bait out if the Germans can see us here. Maybe not, I don't know. Let's, let's be happy. We only have 10 turns as well, so we actually need to really move fast here. And we can't cross the stream anyways now, so... They can. They can actually cross the stream here. Um, I'm, I'm, fi I'm fine with that for now. Let's take this column here. Right, so there's actually a stream here, which is going to impend our movement. Here's a canal, which we cannot cross without a bridge. And here are the, these are heavy bridges connecting here. So we can move through that. Let's see how this armored car can move. It's got massive movement. These, these are fast, man. Right, let's see. So there's a stream, there's a railroad there. We got it. streams. We move up on the high ground here. Maybe move this armored car somewhere up here, maybe. Whoa, he went that way. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Let's right, take the Matilda twos first. Let's get someone here. Let's move twelve tanks there. Maybe move twelve tanks. Here, till the ones, their movement is not the greatest. Speed four, yeah, so pretty slow there. Let's get the engineers. Just trying to get some infantry on the flanks here. Let's get those boys up there. Um, yes, move with the armor here. Okay, we got some tank guns there. So they need to be transported. Let's move them in there. Artillery should be fine. For now. Let's just leave it there. Alright, see what we can do with these guys. What can they move? Obviously, crossing the, uh, the canal, the, this here, means we're going to have to be in travel mode. We do have these positions here to hold off the Germans. Um, maybe, sort of, if we can sneak through here, great. Get them down here, maybe. These are armored car. Look at the Matildas move. Oh, these are all Matilda ones. They move dead slow. Probably need to be in travel mode to get up there fast. All right, let's see here. Yeah, it's going to take some time to cross that stream there. 
Hmm. We've got some, we've got a town here. We do have the uh, access through there. We do want to get over here. Let's actually move these armored cars here. Let's see what we can do with the Matildas here. What if they are in travel mode? Okay, they can get down there. That's good. Let's get down there. Infantry, they're all motorized. Tank guns here. But we should leave the artillery there. What is the range of these guns? 12 range. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and otherwise. So they, they have pretty good range here. They can cover. Maybe these guns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twenty. I think just about reach here. Um, should move these a bit closer, I think. Let's get them in the traveling there. Maybe set them up somewhere back here. We've got some artillery there, fixed guns. Let's get them over here, maybe. Sit up next turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven. Right, so that is good enough for now. All right, what else can we move? Let's go through the numbers here. All right, so we're going to leave those guns there. All right, some of these guys, some of these units can actually be um, activated, but they're in trenches there. Let's look at the map again here. I don't think they uh, took part in the fight there. I think they... I, mean, I guess we could move up and capture this village here, but we do have trenches here, which is good. Defense for us, in case the Germans attack and win, smash through here. I think we should leave them there for now. Okay, headquarters there. We do have those guys. They're in the town and trenches. We're facing. Okay, we can spot some German reconnaissance. Three digits there with motorcycles. We do have a tillery there, man. All right, all units considered. So, so look at the barrages here. The 74th Field Regiment is here. So they can lay down the fire. They have four versus hard and ten versus soft. So it should be 25 pounders, yep. Yeah. So they could fire at the, those armored cars in that village. Just do that. Right, looks like we knocked the vehicle out. So we have the alternate fire on there. So we, the computer decides what to what will happen there. We do have the 25 pounders here as well. They could fire at, at those armored cars. Cost fatigue there. We do have something nice, 60 pounder gun, 16 guns, soft 18, hard 8. Here in the village, I guess we could pound this reconnaissance unit to scare them off. One man, <laughs> one man. Right, we do have 24 guns here. They can shoot at those reconnaissance as well. One man. Okay, wasn't a lot. Right, that's all we can do, I guess. So, um... Let's go through firing, but I think we can't. No, we can't. All right. Yeah, this is going to be fun. Try this out. I hope you guys are going to enjoy this. The scenario is called Frank Force, apparently. We'll see if we can alter history here. 
It didn't go so well. I think they did some, they did pretty good in the start here. They advanced, but then the Germans pulled up the 88s and artillery and stuff, and the uh, and the air force and just sort of pummeled the Allies to bits, and they had to retreat. But let's see if we could do better. <laughs> right. So um, hope you're gonna enjoy it, man. I'll see you in the next part and. Um, have a good one. See you later.